Hello again YouTube, NES Complex here, and today I want to talk about a game that I've been dying to play. I've never got a chance to play it, but it's got a lot of variety and I'm really looking forward to it. Bucky O'Hare. There are thousands of classic games, and just as many ways of rating them. But if you love retro games as much as I do, and just want to know if a game is worth playing, then only one question need be answered. Bucky O'Hare was released by Konami very late in the NES life cycle, 1992, and it was a- Oh boy, you're finally gonna play my game! R right, Bucky, I'm gonna play your game, that's right. Like I was saying, it was an action-adventure title very similar to Capcom's Mega Man. In fact, many people consider it to be Konami's answer to the Mega Man series, and there are definitely some similarities between the two. In the game, you play as Bucky O'Hare, captain of the ship called the Righteous Indignation. Your goal is to rescue your four crew members, Deadeye Duck, Blinky, Jenny the Aldebaran Cat, and the genius Earthboy Willie DeWitt, who've been captured by Complex, the evil robotic Toadmaster. And once you do rescue your crew, you need to infiltrate the Toad Magma Tanker and destroy it. Konami made some very interesting game design choices when developing Bucky O'Hare. First of all, when you start the game, you get to choose from four different planets, so it's a level select. You have a red, yellow, blue, and green planet, and each of them play very differently. What's interesting, too, is once you've played through a planet, you rescue one of your crew members, and you can switch between them on the fly. They all have different powers and abilities, which add some spice to the game, and are also situationally useful. By pressing and holding B, you can charge up a gauge that allow your characters to use their special powers. Bucky can jump higher, Deadeye Duck can cling to walls, Blinky can fly, Jenny has the ability to shoot an orb which you can control, and Willy has a laser that you can charge up. And in addition to the tried and true game pickups like 1-ups, bonus points, and life hearts, you'll also find occasionally a green circle with a P in it that will permanently increase the power gauge for the character you're using. Now all these things sound great, but one thing that I really believe sets Bucky O'Hare apart is the extreme amount of level diversity. Each of the four colored planets has as many as ten acts, and each act is dripping with personality. You'll ride minecarts, negotiate asteroids, ride and avoid robotic snakes, climb trees, fall down an extreme waterfall, descend a shaft oozing with fast-flowing lava, eerily reminiscent of Quick Man's stage in Mega Man 2. You'll ride on boulders and many other platforming variations. And all of that is only in the first half of the game. The second half takes place in the Toad Magma Tanker and has just as many interesting twists and turns in gameplay. The presentation and graphics, as you can tell, are awesome, and the sound design is really great. The one gripe that I would have with this game is just that it's very difficult. Maybe it's because your mama never taught you how to play games. You ever think of that, you loser? You had to bring my mom into it? Look, Bucky, a better way of saying what I'm trying to say is that your game has a lot of trial and error. What do you mean, trial and error? I'll give you some trial and error. Look, Bucky, just oh, calm down and ha have a carrot or something. And while you eat those garden vegetables, we'll ask ourselves the big question. Is it fun? You better say yes. I'm watching you with my beady little bunny eyes. Look, Bucky, I'm not going to be intimidated by your box art and your failed cartoon and your forgotten game. But fortunately for you, I agree. Yes, it is a fun game. But that said, the difficulty at times did make me question whether I would say yes. It's grating at times. But overall, when I look back at all the diversity and the fun things that I did, I do enjoy this game. I wish that it was a little bit easier, a little less trial and error. So to everyone out there who's watching this, there's a reason why Bucky O'Hare appears on so many top 100 NES game lists. The game is really interesting and unique, and even if you can't handle the challenge, like me, it's still worth playing. It's a great game.